Okay, great. All right, all right. Well, thank, well, thank you everyone for joining, for joining us for this, this month, month on Spotlight. Spotlight. With me, With I, me have I have Marlene, Marlene from A plus June. June. Hi, Chris. Hi, thank you so, thank much, you so for much for joining me today, Marlene. Marlene. I, appreciate I appreciate it. it. It's a big pleasure. All right. All right. So, so just, just trying to jump, jump into it here. here. Can you tell, can you me, tell me a little bit about A plus students and what you guys do? Yes, A plus students is, a, is it's really a brain development program, but it's also a skills development program. You know, I, I saw it actually by accident on a TV program in South Africa um, uh, about 10, 11 years ago. Asian community for over 2,000 years. Um, so when you teach students this skill, it's like learning to play the piano. So a child can actually close his eyes eventually and still play the piano without looking. And that's what happens with this incredible skill is that you teach children is that they can do this arithmetic and um, mental maths uh, in the end with and dealing with incredible numbers. And it's also um, an incredible tool to develop the left uh, and especially the right brain. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen some of the videos that you guys have um, of the competitions and everything where the kids are doing it. It looks really cool. Um, of course, it takes some practice to get that good, I'm sure. But, you know, these are little kids who are doing crazy math. Um, so it obviously works very well. <clears throat> So why did you, yeah, so what kind of drove you to get into this? I know you said you saw it on TV and thought it was a great <laughs> idea. Um, but, you know, what What other than that drove you to get into it? I'm a high school maths and science teacher. And um, it's just mathematics is just my thing. It's just a tick. It's just, uh, yeah, it's what uh, t keeps me alive. Uh, so really, <laughs> I... Um, <laughs> Uh, after uh, I left the formal schooling, um, you know, schooling institution, uh, I had extra math students that attended my home and uh, that was my life. And I always thought, my goodness, uh, you know, grade 12 uh, is not that difficult. Uh, it is those little small mistakes that these kids make. They can't multiply five by eight. And that yeah. is the small mistakes that out of the six marks for that specific question, which is not difficult, they lose five. And when I saw this, and it was small little children, uh, and I realized if we can teach children at the age of five, uh, up to about seven, to know their tables, multiplication and division, and to have this skill, they will never struggle in grade 12 in matric. Absolutely, I agree. Um... Uh, my mom's been a teacher my entire life, and she did the same thing. She was teaching um, higher grades, you know, 12, 11, up in um, high school here in the States. And then mm -hmm. she decided to jump back down to elementary school and work with, you know, five- and six-year-olds so mm -hmm. that they would be ready when they got to that point. So I completely understand where you're coming from. It's really necessary wow. to have that we foundation so that you can build on it. Absolutely, we've got so much in common, and I and I just wish everybody uh, realizes that because there's so such a big focus on high school and even later primary school, but that's not where the skills are taught, and it doesn't have to be formal and uh, this hectic math lesson. It is absolutely fun. The kids love every second of it, uh, so you can make it fun for them and still teach them that valuable skill. Yeah, absolutely. I noticed that when I was, you know, watching the videos and going through you guys' websites, you really do focus on keeping it fun and making it almost like a game, you know, where they're learning through that. So maybe explain a bit about that. How do you guys keep it fun, you know, for little kids who have sh maybe short attention spans and, you know, they maybe yes. rather be doing something else? How do you make it a good time? We have uh, up to 11 activities that we do in a 45 minute period. Uh, for the little ones, and when they get older, uh, the activities uh, is less. It's about seven to nine activities in an hour. So they are on the carpet doing brain gym, and then they're at their desk doing something, and then they're back on the carpet playing a game, and then they're doing finger practice. So you just keep them busy um, oh, all the yeah. time, and a lot of challenges. You know, children love okay. to win. So it's always ready, steady, start. 
and they love it. And then we also <laughs> you give a lot of um, presents or sweeties or something for the winner. So kids will work very hard for a teacher or for a little sweet or for a sticker, you know? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and you guys start pretty young as well. I see you start as young as two and a half years and then go up from there. Uh, so that's fantastic. So, you know, before they're even um, entirely sure how it works now, before they would be in like preschool or kindergarten here, even before that. Yes, I, I must say um, this is something unique, unique to South Africa. Um, uh, when I was uh, doing my training and I went to Japan a lot and uh, got my training there, uh, there was mm. children started there at the age four or five years old. And uh, for us, that is the age where they go to primary school uh, foundation phase, grade R. And yeah. um, we, we wanted to start with them in the preschool because, you know, the, uh, the learning window of opportunity for a child is up until the age six from one to six. Then they're like sponges. After that, mm. it's incredibly difficult or gets more difficult to learn a skill. And when we, you're older like us, you don't learn that skill at all. It is incredible. I mean, I can answer maybe four or five digits, but that's it. Um, you know, addition, single digits. Uh, so adults never even learn this. So if we can't mm -hmm. get that child before he's six. Um, so what I did is I developed a single bead um, sorabin, which is basically one row huge big bulky beads for the little ones and I wrote books um, and so now we start with these little ones playing on this tool and they just think they're playing um, but it's what is great is that by the time we start teaching the rules it is before primary school uh, so this helps That's us to fantastic. get yeah, to understand what is a one, what is a two, what does a one and a two mean? So the rules then of the Sorabin is done before primary school, before the age of six, and they have that skill forever. It's it's automatic. It's like closing your eyes and playing the piano and not even the dance. Yeah, that's awesome. So how long have you been doing this? You know, when did uh, you guys have started and when did you get involved with it? 2005, um, I started at the end of 2005 with the marketing um, in South Africa. And then 2006, June, we started with our first classes. Three months later, we did a huge launch and we invited a lot of principals and media to the launch to show them what we could do in three months. And the kids was already doing the mental arithmetic, the Anzan. And from there, it just really exploded. And um, you know the the franchisees came along and it just built from strength to strength um so it's yeah. been 11 years it's, it's 2005 2006 12 years now uh, more 11 years uh you know going and uh, you know practically teaching the students it's been 11 years ah, that's wonderful congratulations on that thank you and there's another thing that's also very important you know, you can't sit, sit still. If I have a look at the, the first books that I got, um, you know, Japanese books that I got, uh, if I didn't innovate and change and update and add, I actually added the uh, school curriculum in it as well so that you can apply to the school curriculum. Uh, and even uh, games, and all kinds of things, uh, some Mensa uh, questions and so on. If I didn't innovate, I think it would have been dead by now because you need to also consistently innovate um, the product itself because the books get old and so on. So I think it's it's a lifelong job for me. I can see I, I consistently need to keep the customers excited. And um, yeah, we're also launching a new product soon. So I'm also excited about that. Yeah, that's fantastic. It seems like you guys really have a passion for what you do. Um, so about how many locations are you at now? How many franchisees do you have? We have 66 franchised areas. Um, some of them uh, will uh, have two or two or more towns if they are mm -hmm. in areas. We have 160 teachers and then uh, all of them teach in 630 teaching locations. So a teaching location is either a center, it's a shopping mall uh, where we have a, a shop, 
or it can be a school that we have a rental contract and we rent one of their classrooms. So we stand at okay. 600 teaching centers. So we, we well saturated in South Africa. Yeah, absolutely. Are you guys exclusively in South Africa or have you expanded to any other countries? Well, we've started the process of expansion uh, about a year ago. We started talking um, to expand. We've we got a lot of interest um, right around the world. Please can we have your product? Please can we have your product? But I've been a little bit scared. So mm -hmm. <laughs> just uh, going into the franchise business. Uh, but we now... Um, been uh, busy with all the registrations. We're actually registering our trademark, our logo, uh, all those things. We're registering it in the United States, and then that will also be registered worldwide. Um, and then just once that registration is through, we will start our first uh, franchise in. We were thinking Houston, Texas, or oh, Austin, Texas. Wonderful. Austin, there. Um, yes. So we'll start our first uh, shop. And um, with the first franchisee, which we will help assist, it's going to fly. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Um, so speaking of international stuff, I see you guys participate in the Pama Mental Arithmetic World Championships. Um, I think you guys are actually going to host it this year. Yes. Oh, this is yeah. so exciting. Um, I um, started going to that organization. I was invited in 2008 and then I was had to, you know, attend for three years and then they appointed me as uh, Palmer President of South Africa. And I've asked to host uh, since I think 2012 and we actually won the bid to host in 2014 and then there was Ebola in the top of Africa, which is not even close to us. And then the competition was cancelled, which was very sad. Oh, no, and yeah. I know. And then I um, bid again, and then we got the 2017. So we are hosting the 28th of December 2017 at the beautiful Pavilion uh, Santa Convention Center in Santa Janesburg, and there will be 17 countries participating. Wow, 17 countries. That's impressive. Yes. That's great. Um, it, wonderful. So maybe you can tell me a bit about how you choose uh, franchisees and you know why they're kind of drawn to your guys' system. So I mean, you obviously have great value. You're teaching kids wonderful skills. Is that why most franchisees join on or do they join on because they want to be business owners and they're entrepreneurs and they like the concept or because they want to work with kids? Um, what kind of the the main motivation you see? The main motivation is the love of the children. Uh, it's not about, you know, if you're going to sit down and first think how much money I'm going to make, this is yeah. not for you. It will come later. You know, we've got franchisees that are close to a thousand students, but that is passion, you know, that is uh, f from their heart. Um, so it's definitely people who adore students, want to teach them and uh, and be with them day in and day night. So we see the uh, those people making uh, really wonderful franchisees um, and not necessarily, uh, you know, uh, killing it on the uh, business side of it, um, you know, the admin side, but you can always get people to do that. And then also the, the alternative is if you have a business mindset, and you have a dedicated, uh, well, dedicated teachers. Um, that can also work um, as long as you also have that that love for the students, because um, we see that the the people who brings or creates or teaches uh, these students that actually participate at the international competitions are uh, not the the business one, the ones who are really the business people. It's the ones who has the heart for the students. Um, so I think that will ult ultimately be the best franchisee, is the one who has the heart for the students. And definitely you have to have an affinity towards math, maths. That must never be yeah. a struggle in your life. <laughs> yeah, otherwise mm. you will, um, you'll sit and cry through the training. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I can see how you'd have to have both those things. And, you know, 
really having a heart for helping the students is, of course, the most important thing. Um, so that kind of brings me asking, so how did you guys find out about us at Zorical, and how do you use us? Well, Zorical uh, was suggested to us last year when we started uh, talking to franchise uh, they called um, well, it's people who help you to develop your franchise in the states. Uh, they mm -hmm. suggested we, uh, start with your program so that we can profile uh, the perfect franchisee and teacher, and that's where we um, got to know Rebecca and um, your team. And uh, yeah, that's how we got to know them. We spent a lot of time, and we have a blueprint now, um, which we let our people you know, do before we choose them. And um, yeah, that's how we got involved and got to know you guys. That's wonderful. We always like it when people suggest us uh, to their various franchises. Um, oh, of course, you use us for uh, recruitment, you said, correct? So being able to, you know, you put your potential franchisees through the assessment and then uh, compare them to your top performers so that you're able to you know, kind of predict how they'll perform and if they'll be a good fit for the company. Yes, and the culture of the company. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that culture part is important because they can be a good fit everywhere else. And if they don't match the culture, like kind of like we were talking about, you know, if they're a great fit and they love kids but they hate math, it's probably not going to work out too well. Yes, absolutely. And then also if they have a very high entrepreneurial um, uh, brain, uh, they would not want to take something that's already perfect and go and duplicate it. So we've seen that as well. You know, they get frustrated. They want to do their own thing. So it's very, very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of interesting. A lot of people think that you always want that entrepreneur, you know, the guy who's going to innovate and change things but in a lot of cases what you really want is someone who can duplicate it take the perfect system that you guys have and just run with it um i Absolutely. think in this case that's that's yeah, for what you guys have definitely an entrepreneur will be bored you know i'm an entrepreneur and i'm constantly bored so um, i'm busy <laughs> launching the next product uh so yeah uh, it's, yeah, it's really absolutely. profile testing through these oracles. You really opened up our eyes. Oh, thank you. Um, so you've mentioned the next product you guys are launching. Uh, is that something that we can talk about? Yes, absolutely. So um, when the students enroll and uh, the, the, the parents have all the children um, who has not done this and they struggle with maths, we always turn them away. And uh, being a high school maths teacher and, 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 you know, the state of maths in our country, um, which is a very interesting, actually, if you think about it, uh, you know, 90% of our school, schools is in, in rural communities and 10% mm -hmm. of our school in, um, in, in the upmarket communities or in the, you know, middle class and so on. So if you really look at that 10%, um, you know, mark, for mathematics, we're actually doing really pretty damn well. Um, the problem is just combining it with the 90% um, because not not because of the students, but because of the lack of teachers um, that we have in, in, in those areas. Um, so, uh, you know, our state of maths is, uh, looks terrible on paper, uh, but we do have brilliant minds in, in brilliant schools. Um, so yes, the, the, the question, I've always done extra maths classes and um, we definitely want to have a flawless uh, system where children in, in high school level, at the moment we're only doing primary school, can also benefit from our product. So they'll never be able to learn the skill. But there is, um, a, a, there's other systems and other things that we can help them with. So we're developing a product. Uh, for our high school pupils that's uh, already struggling with math that unfortunately did not start A plus students when they were little mm. Yeah, but you know, that's exactly what I was talking about. You're absolutely an entrepreneur. You know, you saw that need um, with the with the older students and you guys are 
you know, erasing the fill it. So I think that's wonderful. Um, even though your uh, core, of course, is with the younger students who, like you said, be able to absorb it like sponges, you know, the high school kids, of course, you know, they, they want that help as well. So, you know, again, it all comes back to helping the kids. Yes, that's uh, of course they want. So yes, when uh, the, the idea is that the franchise business, the, the shop, the retail store, will have the retail shop in the front. We have educational toys that we use in the classroom. So um, two years ago, I developed a course, uh, well, a product called um, Play Maths. So if you think of algebra or fractions or uh, graphs, uh, any topic you can think of in the primary school, uh, you know, syllabus, um, I got toys which you can actually play it. Because if you can play it and you can see it and you can touch it and you can feel it, then it, then suddenly it's easy. So that play mm -hmm. mats uh, you we use in the classroom, um, and then we started getting a little bit more toys from uh, STEM products, um, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. There's wonderful ranges, 4M and GIGO and so on. Uh, so our front shop has got these wonderful uh, educational toys and play math products and, you know, things teachers can use and so on and your sciences. Uh, we've got some books as well. And then at the back, we've got dedicated classrooms. So some of them will then be used for the Sorbonne education and then some of them will then be used for the um, high school uh, maths program that we're still launching. Yeah, I love that setup, how you have kind of the retail store in the front and then the tutoring and classrooms in the back. I think that really makes good use of the space. Yes, and it looks pretty. I don't know if you saw or not. <laughs> I, I did, now. yeah. I love the way they look. So the kids are just, and we've got a little play plan and it's really nice. Yeah. Um, all right, so that about does it for me, Marlene. I don't have really any other questions for you. Did you have any questions for me or anything that uh, I didn't get to that you wanted to cover? No, I'm fine. Uh, we are going to launch soon and uh, we'll let you know. And then, you know, I Please really hope that you guys will also help us through our uh, sifting process and we can really get the the best franchisee suitable for this um, in the States. And we get we could get so much requests for it. We just have to start this. And it would be lovely if you guys can help.